Oh, are we married to social media? Well, don't you worry because we've got author Kristen Perino in to discuss how social media impacts our relationships. And we are playing our game, Selfie or Shelfie, and drinking our nightcap, Selfie Sauce, tonight on It's Complicated. You're listening to It's Complicated with your hosts, Jennifer Golden and Lauren Leonelli, coming to you live from the AfterBuzz TV studios in Los Angeles, California. Hello, everyone. Welcome back for another episode of It's Complicated. The struggle is real when you're dating in the city. I'm Lauren. And I'm Jen. And tonight, guys, we are discussing why people are married to social media with the author of the book, Selfie to Selfless, Kristen Perino. Yes, that's right, you guys. Kristen is a Hawaiian-born but California-raised youngest of three and a very proud auntie. She worked in the fashion industry for over a decade, and she feels that God instilled a passion and mission field in her own backyard of L.A. with a heart for leading young women to be all that they were created to be, a longing spread genuine authenticity in the Christian community, and a drive to inject a world with some good old fashioned love plus a fierceness stemming from her italian background i totally get that one Kristen penned the book from selfie to selfless live the life that you were created for and for those listeners out there you can't see but this book is beautiful so so pretty so pretty makes you want to take a selfie with it it actually does (laughs) it's a beautiful blue um but you guys can find it online uh but so guys living in a world where selfies are glorified we all know we've seen a lot of those Mm -hmm. personal opinions are amplified louder than god's opinions even at times and society is unashamedly selfish where do we find our meaning and purpose among all the insanity from selfie to selfless takes an authentic look at multiple areas of life so we can wave the white flag on the filtering frenzy and shift our gaze from inward to upward, resulting in a more fulfilled, confident, purpose-driven life. Yeah, you guys, I love all of that. And according Mm -hmm. to Kristen, living the life you were created for is not just about perfectionism. It is about purpose. If you have, she believes, if you have breath in your lungs, then you have the power to radically fan the flames of selflessness through everyday tasks and humble acts until it becomes contagious fire that you refuse to put out. The flames start with us with you, a personal relationship with God or the universe or whatever you call it, a sense of humor and genuine authenticity to discover that life is more beautiful without a filter. That is just so well said. I, I you know, maybe she should be an author. Yeah, I we should like, tell her. I feel like that could work for her. <laughs> I think so. Definitely should be writing. And speaking um, of authors. Uh, yeah, so guys, you know, we, we try and help you the best we can with dating and relationships, but do you want to have fun, learn and grow in all the areas of your life? Yeah. Well, we have the podcast for you. Um, It's a one-stop shop. Basically, it's conversations with Maria Menounos. Yes. You know, guys, the person who created After Buzz TV. It's her podcast edition of her show, and it's hosted by, obviously, Maria Menounos, and it's every Friday on iTunes. So you have us on Wednesday. You've got her on Friday. Yeah. And you will fe- you will hear things from celebrities and influencers. You will learn secrets and tips of her how to be better in all aspects of life. Yeah, you guys. I mean, we're just giving you a 360 right here. We're giving you, like, how to be better from the inside out with Selfie to Selfless. We're going to then help you with your dating and relationships. Mm-hmm. And then Maria's going to wrap it all up into one pretty package talking about how to eat healthy and actually helps animals. Helps and you with your like, career. Like, Fine. Finances. I mean, you're welcome. Organize. You're welcome, yeah. everyone. She's so, basically the big sister you've always wanted. Yeah. Or if you even have one and you're like, eh, I don't like mine, you've got Maria. And we know Maria. We worked with Maria, and she is truly and genuinely authentic all the time. She's going to give it to you straight. She's funny. She's real. She is like your big sister. So if you guys want to listen to something that's like super real and like going to give you great information that you can relate to, then I suggest listening to Conversations with Maria. It's And okay. guys, you all know she just got, you know, married and stuff. Yeah. So she clearly <laughs> knows how to get to that point. Um, so we'll help you with all the like pre pre stuff like dating and and the entryway yeah. to a relationship. And she's gonna take you to the next 
level. I think that that sounds like a great match. And yeah. you guys, we are excited because we've got a really awesome guest. She creates a safe place for the perfectly imperfect, the unfiltered, and the unfollowed, helping to make a shift in perspective from inward to upward to live a fulfilled, impactful, purposeful, driven, purpose-driven life. Welcome to the studio, Kristen Perino. Yay! Hi, guys! Hi! Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. We're we... so happy to have you. Yes. And before we get into everything and get rid of all of our selfies, we need a drink. Yes, we do. Yes. Because our nightcap tonight is our selfie sauce yes. with a good cold bottle of Stonehenge 2014 Reserve Chardonnay from buywine.com because when we drink a good bottle of Seats in the Nay Nay, mm -hmm. we get a little less self-conscious and we want you guys to drink some liquid courage with us and let's talk about the socials. And snap some selfies while you're at it. I've already been drinking mine. I didn't know yeah. we were oh, supposed no. to wait. Oh, oh no. okay. You don't okay. <laughs> no, you know, we're just introducing it. But you can do whatever you no, want. No, it's here. not safe in front of me. Yeah, <laughs> we, uh, we've already started drinking. It's yeah. happy hour time. It's mm -hmm. five o'clock somewhere. So cheers, yes. guys. Yes, cheers. cheers. And to our listeners and viewers. Yes. That's right. And uh, since we're on the subject of selflessness and giving, we have mentioned in the past, so we recently went to being in L.A., uh, to uh, the Doris Bergman's 10th anniversary Valentine Romance Oscar Style Lounge and Party. That is a mouthful. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was a few weeks ago, and they have all these amazing giveaways there. And everyone there was like, you know, sh talking about their products and letting you try things and sample things. And they're so generous to uh, share some of their stuff with us. And um, I really like, I'm reaching over here, <laughs> one of our favorite products is the Scribble Watch. So um, Unveiling Chalk by Quincy Watches created this because they said they wanted something that would last, something that would fit everybody, and that's something that would stand out, plus their craftsmanship. And it does. It's got a really big face. It looks kind of like it's personally done. It comes in a bunch of different colors. And I kind of think it works for like men, women, and kids. It's like all around awesome. Plus yeah. then you won't be late for your date. Exactly. When you see what time it is. Exactly. It's cute. Or you yeah. can give it to your date you as a gift. You could. Since we are giving things. Yes. Um, and also, Kristen brought these awesome books that are on our desk yes. um, from Selfie to Selfless. And we've got a really exciting gift from Pampered Pets Playhouse. It's mm -hmm. a daycare, spa, pet resort. Uh, so we have $100 to that. It's grooming, training, extended overnight stays. I have a dog. Lauren, you have a dog. Yes. And so and it's my boyfriend's dog, but I she's like mine now. Right. I mean, you live together, so what is she just also there? She's also there. I mean, he also has a daughter, so I'm not like, and she's my daughter now too. Like oh, a dog is female. Easier, but I a guess. dog is like someone kind of adopts anyway. So yeah. it's like I've now adopted the dog, and I talk to her, like she can understand things I'm saying. I mean, is that weird? Do you talk to animals, Kristen? Yes, I do. Yeah, I do actually, but I don't talk to cats. I'm not a big cat person, oh. so I actually ignore cats. Oh. I just like well, they, I'm allergic, so I'm like just oh. don't don't, look <laughs> don't at make me. eye contact. Don't, don't look at me. Yeah, <laughs> they, my cat would ignore you. I'm an animal, all animal person, but I talk to them all, and I do it in a voice. Like that's probably annoying for men, and I don't care. But we're talking about like dating and relationships. I never was like hid that when I was like in the dating process. I'd like see an animal and be like, oh my god. Like, I don't yeah. care. Yeah. See, I found that my animal voice is the same as my children voice. And my brother called me out on it. He's like, you're using, you just literally talk to my daughter in the same voice you talk to Can my hear dog. It? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's that same type of thing of like, oh my God, hi. Oh, yay. Hi, hi. You know, it's like, like high pitch. Like, <laughs> you can't probably do quite annoying. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. But it's like, it transitions. Children, dogs, animals, anything. Everybody loves animals. And we were like really excited to get the, um, the dog, the dog bag. Yeah, the, it was like a, a duffel bag filled with things, including this. And there were uh, like daycare. pictures of dogs in this on the inside and stuff, and we were just like, oh. oh. That was yeah. so great. Yeah. Um, yep. And then also, speaking of transitioning, <laughs> um, yeah. if you want to transition your skin into possibly oh, a younger yeah. look, or I don't know, you just want to like rejuvenate and stuff, we have. Uh, a gift card, a VIP complimentary procedure for one area um, of like your face or something. Yeah, like you know, like or rejuvenation laser laser of some sort. Yes. From Montrose Regenerative Cosmetic and Laser Center. Yeah, you guys. So obviously we like that because that's make fun. your make your animal look good, make yourself look good, and be on time. 
Exactly. Don't miss your appointments. And don't forget to follow us on all the socials at Complicated Show where you can uh, send us questions and comments. And we tonight are going to talk about and send us questions and comments if you have any about if we're married to social media. Yes. It was a whole thing that came out on the Today Show recently about how social media affects relationships and like you don't even know you're doing it. It's like a very subconscious thing. And yeah. it's almost like such an addiction that you're like, it's like just part of your day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's part of like going through the motions of like being bored and picking your phone up and looking. And for everybody, it's something different. Whether you're on a dating app, like you said on your way over here mm -hmm. and like, or whether you're just looking at social media or. I mean, and then you're doing it again. Yeah, and then yeah. again, and then you're like, yeah. oh my God, I lost track of how many times I just picked up my phone oh, yeah, yeah. and know. nothing new has happened. Or no. you're like down a rabbit hole of yes. somebody's Instagram, yes, learning everything you need to know about your potential date's ex-girlfriend and coming up with all of these decisions you've made about their life, which you don't actually know yet. You don't Full actually know. Just yeah. 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 Totally, Hours spent judging. Totally judging, but I will say I have judged on social media before and I have been spot fucking on. So I'm just yeah. saying. I think social media, it can be very revealing. And even if what you're... If, Ironically so, even if what you're tr what you're showing isn't really what's all underneath it, I think that is revealing in of itself. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. A million percent. Because How much you, do we filter? Right. You know when people are fighting because you don't see their significant other. You guys. Oh, yeah. Olivia Cupo and Danny Amendola broke up. What? What? <sighs> How did you find this out? Social media? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, actually. Why and would they break up? They're the most attractive. I don't know. Well, they are allegedly, the, what alerted people was social media. Oh. There were no photos of her on his page anymore. He unfollowed her. Uh -uh. And everything seems so on her end, but uh, allegedly then, you know, people start talking and they're like, well. Um, I do believe that she also was, like, up for Rookie of the Year, on, like, for the Sports, Sports Illustrated. Illustrated. Yeah. Totally. So, guys. Who knows if that helped or hurt. Well, okay, listen. She... And I, I, I'm Ugh. a fan of her. I don't know her personally, so I can't really say. And maybe we could judge or not judge on her social media. But she, I kind of like her. I think she's beautiful. And I love that I'm a Patriots fan because my boyfriend is. So I'm, like, guilty by association. So I love both of them. But do you think her social media posting, like, a lot was, like, an issue? Do you think that would? I mean, I guess it depends on for him if that bothers him or not. Yeah, I think that he probably knew what he was getting into yeah. when he was yeah, dating her. She's already that, famous. Yeah, because that is part of her platform, and, and that is part job, of her yeah. business. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. So it's probably something that it wasn't foreign to him, like, oh, my gosh, like, I didn't realize this was, you know, part of your yeah. life, you yeah. know? Should I think be that, shocked. Yeah, absolutely. I think that sometimes it's the content of uh, that can catch people by surprise. Like, or, or how obsessed people can be about it. Like, <sighs> like so if we were out to dinner and I, it was my job to have a platform and to post um, a certain amount of times or with partners or whatever, and we're at dinner and I'm not even paying attention to you guys because I'm just so consumed in my post. You know, so there's a difference. Like any job, mm -hmm. when do you turn it off? Right. And when yes. do you actually work, you know? Well, and, and when you're a personality, that's your job. You yeah. are to do that. It's yeah. not like you're covering... A specific thing you are covering yourself and your life yeah, all like you have to ex you have to find I mean that's the thing I mean we can talk about social media in general but for somebody like that and we all are on social media so we follow a lot of people whose jobs is to open the door into their personal lives yeah. so like I think it's important to talk about the balance just in general but for those people I don't know how the hell do you do that I think yeah. you also probably lose the boundaries there yeah and yeah. it becomes like an obsession and then okay so let's dive into you and these yeah. whole the yes. selfie phenomenon yeah how did you go from hashtag selfie to selfless what was the and driving what does that force? like mean to you so exactly. i have not gone quote unquote selfless it, 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 to me it hopefully it's a, an awakening it's a journey it's a way to look at life on a daily basis it's not like i I'm like a monk living up on a hill and I just all of a sudden woke up one day and I'm like, I will be selfless. There's not something that you obtain. It's more right. of a, a way that you look at life. And it's just, um, it, it can go into anything, whether it's driving down Wilshire, driving a little more selflessly. I know that I Ooh. tend to cut people off. That's or get, a hard for me. You know, yeah, I drive like I'm the only person on the planet and um, and it's everybody else's fault, you know, so to speak. <laughs> um, or anything from that to, you know, it's Starbucks, you know, how you treat the barista behind the counter or if 
um, you know, just buying. One time um, I was chatting with somebody and they told me a story about how they were at LAX, like probably the most angry place on the planet. Oh, yes. Just LAX in general. Totally. And they were at the Starbucks and they were taking a super early flight. They were um, ordered their coffee and then they decided to order the person's or take care of the person behind them and pay for their Starbucks. Aww. And then he sat back after he went to go wait for his coffee. He noticed that each and every person Did after that. him just kept returning paid the forward. favor, paid it forward <gasps> because their coffee was taken care of. So they like turned around and said, oh, well, I'll just buy your coffee then, you know? Ooh. And Aww. so he sat back wow. while he was waiting for his drink and saw obviously the angriest place on earth, this like kindness that went on for so long. My bigger question is though, is like, who's that person that stops it? You know what I mean? Like, right. how yeah. you feel? You know? Well, you can't sort of because then you it's can't. your fault. And then, totally. it, but people tend to do nice things because they don't want to be the person that doesn't. Exactly. That's I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with peer asshole. pressuring people into doing that. Well, like, it, yeah, <laughs> we need to peer pressure them a little bit more. If their parents didn't do it enough yeah, when they were growing up and teaching them the lessons, then hey. Or that's like, the one peer pressure I'm okay with. You know, I still them. wonder, and of course we're all guilty of it, like you're saying your goal is to strive to be selfless, but like there are times where you're not. I am sure I am positive I say things that aren't nice, but like I just sometimes don't get like, did you not learn if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it at all? Like just keep it. Yeah. Or I just, yeah. I think I had friends that consistently do it and I'm like, okay, I get it sometimes, yeah. but like, you know, yeah. it does spread, like kindness spreads. So I think doing that in a line or like paying a bridge, I lived in San Francisco for a while. I would sometimes pay the bridge toll for the person behind me. Oh, that's somebody that's did awesome. it. Somebody see? did yeah. it for me one time and I was like, oh my God. Yes. Right? So, yeah. See, and here in California now that's, we don't have any toll workers anymore but and coffee. everyone's on yeah. their own right. so yeah. we can't coffee pay for anyone, is really but. nice and I mean it's not cheap so it actually is like a nice thing to do <laughs> yeah recently. you gotta be careful with that that actually happened to a homeless person one time with me in West Hollywood I my office used to be over on Robertson Boulevard and there's um, you know the Starbucks right across the street and so we had like our resident like homeless person that hung out there pretty much every single day and I was walking by and I was like hey this is early on in our relationship <laughs> before I really knew him and he was like the fanciest homeless person I had ever met but I you know offered him my mom always kind of told me don't offer them money just in case you don't really know what, what they're, they're using, using it, it yeah. for but everyone deserves food so yeah. you can always offer them food so I did and of Starbucks course has good food it has great oh food oh god was he like also, I'm gluten free yeah he was Shut like he's like up. I'm lactose intolerant no it really hurts my stomach blah 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 if I could get this or this like please no egg sandwich or like maybe just a bagel. I walked out of Starbucks literally $25 later for this homeless man because then I also wanted to buy like overbought yeah. bagels so we had something for later but right. still was really I was nice. like I just just this but I'm in there I'm like wait he can't have that I'm like checking labels for you're this like homeless reading. person you know what I mean that totally. I'm like I yeah I don't even or do that like for myself you get in, extra gold stars for that yeah oh you're my gosh in, well, you're in line I, at Starbucks and you're like can I please buy you your coffee and they're like I'm buying a round for my whole office yes totally like, yes wrong and that day is, to be selfless yes, yes. exactly okay so now going into the selfie element of this yeah, yeah. Um, because obviously in dating and relationships, like, you know, you really care about what the other person thinks of you. You try and like support each other, validate each other, like pump each other up. But what do you think about somebody that's in a relationship that's constantly, let's say Olivia Colpo, mm -hmm. constantly posting selfies, needing this like love from her fans. Like, right. because when, if, when it's not a product and it's not something that it's like, okay, we could see why you'd be pushing that. It's just you because you think you look pretty today. Right, yeah, well, right. What do you think of that in terms of a dynamic of a relationship? You know, it's funny because there is such a, well, going back to the social media thing with them posting selfies, a lot of fans, so there's fans that follow her too. So mm -hmm. it's just people like to see her. You know, mm -hmm. they are so drawn to her. So it's almost like she. there's an algorithm that we all know now too in, in Instagram and social media and stuff. So, for, so if she needs to get a certain amount of followers and she knows that her fans just love her selfies, then... And sh you know she'll post one of those potentially to just boost the following and right. basically give the people what they want, right? Yeah. You know, which is right. a selfie of herself. Right. Um, but I think ultimately how that um, just selfies in general, um, how it affects relationships is we become absolutely so self-absorbed with yeah. our own reflection, our own voice. You know, um, if oh. you don't agree with somebody, you can just go online and make your own YouTube channel and rant off all the ways that you don't agree. You know, and it's just we've we've become it's kind of it's this very like isolating. fight or flight. Yeah. Like, no, I'm going to. I'm not even going to listen to your opinion because I value mine so much. And so I'm going to blast mine out to hopefully drown yours out and right. prove how you're wrong rather than us stepping back and saying, 
okay, like even I, I started writing this actually before the presidential election, a more recent oh. one, which was <laughs> just, ooh, lots yes. going on. But even so, um, not to get off of dating, but it was just, um, everyone was just yelling and screaming at each other. And it was, you know, no matter what you believe or what side you come from, I think that we need to step back and say, why is this person saying this to me right now? Yeah. And, you know, and that does apply to dating, you know, in the sense of what, what, environment were they brought up in yes um what's their background what what do they know what what have they learned you know and what's and, currently and happening exactly. in their life right now yeah. today exactly yeah. and so even if um so it's that selfless approach just to relationships in general whether that's like political or dating or whatever that we can think even if we may never agree at the end of the day like i've dated guys and i'm like i will never agree with you but i understand where you're coming from because i've stepped back and realized like your background and upbringing is very different than mine and we've had different opportunities of growth in adulthood and we're just not seeing eye to eye and this is not going to happen right and sometimes it's okay to agree to disagree and a relationship can still happen but exactly. you have to pick what your boundaries are within that like i will agree to disagree with you on this topic but yeah. when it comes to this topic that's a deal breaker we say yeah. that a lot on deal the breaker. show that's yeah. a deal breaker it's my non-negotiable yeah my yeah. non-negotiable is a guy on social media that who follows. is not 5, 10, or under. Well, that too. That, that's just a whole other issue. But um, well, It's he, not really. It's I not wouldn't really, even so. know that he was on social media by this point because I'd already seen his hype. But um, and I'd ruled him out. Just kidding, everybody. I am being more open-minded. You all should be she too. She has dated people that are under 5, 10. Don't even get it twisted. Have we I? just like to... Yes. Ooh. Mon petit. Oh, yeah. Well, we called him Mon Petit, guys. <laughs> Hello. And there's others, He's a too. really nice guy, but also he was a little bit weird. I don't know. There's but anyway, yeah. she isn't. We just get poke fun. Thank you. That's very selfless of you to <laughs> compliment me in hey, some way. Who, <laughs> knows, who knows what what names are out there about me after all of my yeah, trials? I, you know what I mean? They yeah, probably call know. me that, and, you know, whatever, that blank girl. You know, it's just oh, like, yeah. whatever. It's, it's that's insert, insert the word there. You know, yeah, it's like, right. you just I have a crazy know. past. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, so I have a real issue with guys that follow Instagram models. Yeah. <laughs> like, if Wait, ratio, how do you? Yes. Okay, hold yes. on. Wait. Yes. I know like how to do it, but like, I mean, it, how how do you how do you expedite figuring that out fast? With my eyes. No, Jen, explain the process to people I who might not be as quick. Who, I, okay, so here's a real easy tell. Yes. If you see how many people are following them, and it is a lot lower than how many people they follow, it's because they are an Instagram model yes. stalker. Well, then totally. you have to look and see yeah. if all the people they're following and they are, are. And so that's what you do. Then you yes. go to the following and if you just something, scroll through. If, first of all, also yeah. if he ha if he follows that many people on Instagram, he's got too much time. Yeah, true. Yes. So that's why then you know something totally. must be up with this ratio here. Let me take a deeper dive that lasts all. It's like five seconds because yeah. you can see naked girl, naked girl, naked girl, celebrity, like, naked girl, naked girl. Totally. Naked Girl, cousin, naked girl, yeah. naked girl, naked girl, right. sister. And like ultimately, at the end of the day, what we look at our feed because how many times do we pick up our Instagram and just mindlessly scroll through it? So, yeah. And that, but it's that's what's feeding our brain. So whatever, whoever you're following, whether it's like politicians or these, that's young, your interest. You know, yeah. nude Instagram stars or whatever. That's your interest, and that is ultimately what's feeding your brain without even realizing it. Totally. I dated a guy like that where I had to call him out. He was like a. 30 year, 31 years old or something and, and we were sitting on the couch one time and how um, long had you been dating at this point just a couple months okay it was but just like a bumble to thing. be like serious yeah. though. well yeah for sure and we were that's sitting, long like, in la yeah. standards oh <laughs> it's totally we, yeah we were getting serious but no i literally sitting on the couch and um one night and he you know just a super casual night and he was scrolling through his instagram and i like just obviously was sitting there we were kind of cuddling and i just glanced over because i have eyes and saw <laughs> as he was scrolling through you it know it's like, like the like kendall jenner and like all these young little things victoria's secret models all this stuff and i told him i said that a that's weird that like and also like Gigi had did like i love like 18 Gigi. year old yeah, i love her she's fantastic yeah. but she's literally like 18 yeah. you know and you are a 30 31 year old man and you are like literally lusting over this that's 18 year old you know what i mean that's this weird odd Makes yeah. Me yeah like why exactly yeah. so yeah. what'd you say I said exactly that. I said, like, that's You're weird. weird. And Why are you he... doing that? And he was like, I like to look at pretty things. <laughs> Obviously. Okay, here's and I said, thing. So go You're look like... at the ocean. And here We're I in am. Santa Monica. And yeah. I'm right and here. I'm, yeah, and I'm you. sitting right totally. next but to listen, you. Yeah. Guys, obviously, like, there's a lot of humans out there, not just guys, that look at porn. But now it, we can see what they look at. I'd yeah. rather not know. Like, go look at it on your own time, but don't follow them. Yeah. Like, don't let me see that you're double tapping one girl. 17 of her photos to try and get her attention and oh, I can see yeah. it. 
Because totally. why are you trying to get this girl's attention? Do you have to like the photo? Can you just look at it? Let's just stop at looking. Okay, so, I see what you're. Yeah, yeah. that like makes you sense. are literally trying to do because like, you're engaging. To the yeah, when you're engaging. Yes. Yeah, when you're engaging. I mean, to me, I just. I mean, at this point, I just don't have time for any of that anymore. I'm like it's just. Dude, yeah. that that shows all sorts of red flags to me that you'd be following somebody like that. But right. it's like, Agreed. but I mean, not to follow Gigi Hadid. She's a great person, but like for a very like not fashion industry, yeah. right. thirty-one-year-old man yeah. who has no interest in what the, she's doing. Yeah, 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 exactly. No, no interest in the runway fashion shows. It's <laughs> all sorts of other things. So it's, it's like. It's just there's that fine line. It's to- And this is like, again, uh, uh, that specifically is an issue. And yes, it's a red flag, I believe, as well. But also, on the surface, the fact that we just touched on that he's sitting there on the couch next to you, you're sort of still new-ish. And like, okay, I get sometimes you pick up your... Sometimes that happens. But like, it's also part of what we're talking about. Yeah. Are you married to social media? Like... You're yeah. fucking sitting there next to a human who you're trying to get to know and you're on your phone. And while some of us might be like, so what, I do that all the time, that's what we're talking about. Because yeah. now it's socially accepted, especially in relationships that both people are okay with it. That's when you, I think you like lose all sense of reality. And then mm-hmm. because your significant other is okay with it, you take that into the outside world. So now you assume everybody's okay with it. Yeah. So you sit at a table yeah. and you're having you're catching up with girlfriends, but what you're actually doing is telling, you're telling them what's happening in your phone that's not here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I even totally. have a hard time sometimes like taking my phone out to take pictures. Not that I'm not ever on social media. I think when I'm like by myself, I am. But I'm like, I just also then I feel like I'm like looking at something through the camera lens and not through my eyes. And then I'm like, then I have to post it and I have to think of a fucking fun quote to put up there. And then I'm like, and then uh, yeah. what filter am I going to pick? Yeah. And now yeah. all of a sudden it's, a it's lot of 15 minutes yeah. later yeah. and I'm where am I? I'm not even paying attention to what's going on. So then I yeah. wait for the thing to end. My boyfriend posts stuff really fast. Yeah. He'll just all of a sudden he'll post and he doesn't really care about his like comment his his um caption caption Caption. he's just like like we went to austin he's like austin you will be missed i'm like well it's not dying but okay whatever (laughs) and then he posted all these pictures but then i'm like well all the same people follow him that follow me and i I can't yeah and then i'm like i feel like i need to do it fast but then i'm taking myself out of the moment but like yeah no i respect what you do i and i actually have been trying to do more of that too where you will after a trip for instance you then go back and post like a recap or like a throwback right. Thursday. Thank God for throwback Thursday. You I know. can relive things. Yes. Then you can Absolutely. do it and not look yeah. like an idiot. Yeah. Totally. And the good thing about even like Instagram story, and I know that everyone's like all about that because it's fleeting. You don't have to commit to a caption. You literally can like scribble yeah. with your finger I and then put that. it up more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's super easy. It's fast. It's great. In fact, we have a girlfriend that's currently on her honeymoon and she's Instagram storying <gasps> because she's documenting the whole thing versus like posting photos and doing the whole it's thing. It's great yes. too because I feel like I'm We're there, there with both yes. of them. Right. Yes, so that's but you're fun. not like committing to the right. post. Totally. Yeah. So I love that. But also the fact that you can post a photo or a video later in Instagram story is kind of cool. So you could yes. do like a recap. Oh. Like yes. you can yeah. do a quick photo or even the other people you're with could take photos. Then they can send them to you and then you can just post them. So Which later. actually does help in this in socializing when you're with your yes. friends. Because it does take the pressure off that you don't need to post it then. Which thank you. Instagram. Yeah. yeah. That is awesome. It's helping all of our social lives. So that's I, one way yeah. to be more present and self less in the moment yes, of a party or a dinner later. or something to remember yeah. that you can post it later and you guys this affects everybody like yeah. we were talking about this it effect, so if you're just starting to date somebody you're married to social media because maybe you're looking for people on your dating apps or now you're like sort of a couple months in so you're like looking at their past history or who what they posted a year ago or maybe now you're in a relationship and the ex is annoying you and you're looking at her stupid photos mm-hmm. to be like okay stop liking all of the ex, your ex-boyfriend's friends photos and commenting now because you're still right. trying to stay relevant right. or now you're getting divorced and so you're back in the game like yeah. everybody can be married at any point of the beginning to the end and thereafter of a relationship mm-hmm. can be married to social media absolutely yeah. and I think if we're going to be selfless in relation to this I think the best thing we can do is be cognizant of other people's time oh yeah so Definitely. with like, your uh, with your watch exactly yeah. well you know don't be late and also don't make me start counting how long you're on your phone but yeah I think because time is very precious especially the older that you get whether you have children and like you are stepping away from your child to be with somebody else and you are sacrificing that like time with your kid other people should be very respectful of that I think if you're on a date with somebody people should be respectful my favorite thing is if somebody apologizes and then does it because I'm like I can understand 
that you need to do whatever you're doing potentially if you yeah. explain it yeah. and you apologize because then yeah. I know you respect me you respect my time you know what you're doing is wrong so you're yeah. probably not going to make a habit of it exactly or just exactly. that you're yeah, aware and yeah right. to make them aware and I think that that is again the biggest thing with this with what I would hope this selfish selfless movement of just being aware I'm not asking for people to be perfect right and it's just about like striving to just be aware and look up from our phones you know what I mean is that and, what like got you here what what started this whole thought process were you like annoyed by people on their phone did you feel like you were on your phone like what or was, was it, it the homeless man well I yeah well yeah All we're, we're still tight yeah. it's getting serious we um <laughs> we had um I mean with with social media specifically I think one of the biggest call outs too was that it's not a lot of it is not real you know we're choosing what we want people to see totally. and what we want filtered and those captions whatever we want to say where it's 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 really actually not real life many of the times. Mm -hmm. It's a highlight of our life. Kelsey. And so I think that so totally. many times that um, we, when we do invite that into our relationships and into our lives, it is, we do um, start comparing just naturally. And so we are left with this empty feeling because we have just spent however long comparing our, you know, ordinary lives to someone else's highlight reel and whatever they choose pick and choose to sh show us and that even goes to like other relationships too even with some of my girlfriends you know that are married or or whatever or dating or at whatever stage of life they're at it's like it just fantasizes like oh they're at this amazing they're place in their there, life right? yes. and I'm here yes, and exactly. I want to be there exactly. but I'm here yeah and then all of a sudden you start feeling super bad about yourself and then it just is kind of like this whole snowball effect and then obviously and then trying to get out and date when you already feel terrible about your own self-esteem. It's just like this whole awful, awful it's snowball effect. It's like a effect. cyclical snowball effect. And the other thing about it is, is that like you kind of sometimes in today's world, and I know I can speak for me and you, and maybe you like would rather meet someone in person, but you also kind of have to be on social media, whether yeah. it's a dating app or not, to yeah. meet somebody. Which is, isn't that so crazy? So my brother has been married to his wife now for about five years, but they met on match.com. <gasps> and I remember like back in the day, Again, this is only like five or six years ago or something like that. And he told me that he, he had just, he was, God, like 33 at that time. And he had just broken up with a long-term girlfriend. And he's like, you know, I'm just going to give Match.com a try. And I remember telling him, trying to talk him out of it, saying, no, only weirdos do that. Like, who can't meet people in person. Like, and my brother is a good-looking guy, had his career, his life yeah. together and stuff, but just wanted to find his wife. And I... I tried everything to talk about it. I said, you're not a weirdo. Like ah. only weirdos do that because who can't meet people in person. Right. Yeah. And now only five, six years later, the game has totally changed where it's actually shocking. I met my ex-boyfriend in person, like through friends. What? I know, right? I met my yeah. boyfriend through friends. Yeah. It's How weird is that? Shocking. Yeah, it, it really is. A, I mean, totally. I was recently set up by somebody, a, a couple friend of mine met a guy at a restaurant and they were like, can we set you up with our friend? <gasps> yeah. So we went out and that was great. And so oh my gosh. that, I mean, I, other than that, I'm like, I had actually before yeah. that been like, I'm done with dating apps because I know for me, it's not yeah. my thing. And it will take a lot of like swiping, a lot of work, a lot of dates that it I is, don't want to be on. It's like a job. It, it is really a job. is. It's a part-time job. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're trying to invest and like get to know these certain, like all these different people. And I, I literally, I have in my notepad I have like a copy and paste like just my general like just in case they ask because I I can't write the same thing over and over and over oh you know my what God, I mean I so I just go that. to my notepad and I'm like mm, and you know I'll, I'll edit it pertaining right. but it's a heck of a lot easier than oh that's gosh. actually pretty good you have yeah. like stock answers but then I yes. have my stock like breakup text wait <gasps> oh a girlfriend of mine yeah. sent me hers too and it worked Awesome. Okay, wait, how do you, oh, let's hear this, and then let's remember, you guys, that being selfless is, like, I think giving somebody your authentic, honest self, and not like we've talked about on the show, ghosting, yeah. and, like, disappearing, yeah. and yeah. while sometimes maybe you don't want to say to someone, like, well, I don't really want to date you anymore because I don't want to have sex with you, like, right. maybe sometimes it's okay to sort of fade into the distance depending on how close yeah. you've gotten, what yeah. is your breakup stock answer and then how do we make sure we're doing this in a selfless way okay so well what's your um i usually go with i if they like i usually do it as a prompt from like them asking me for plans again yes and otherwise which is great because then it's not out of like the right. clear blue sky right and so it's usually that and it, so i'm like okay um, I think you're really nice and I would love to hang out again as like friends um, I get more of a friend vibe you know I totally understand if you don't want to be friends but um, 
that's where I'm at. I hope Jen, you understand. You but, look yeah. so sad right now. I'm sad for that. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys could see her, her whole entire face just change. She's like, okay, this is what I do. I feel yeah. bad for them. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, I no, mean, they're probably fine and they don't care, but, like, yeah. I feel bad that I have to do that. Yeah. Because in my heart, I'm like, don't you know? So you say, don't you I feel know. how I feel? So like, you just yeah. you're getting a friend vibe. Yeah, I get yeah. a friend vibe, and I, like, try and, like, ease into it, and I'm, like, really nice about the whole thing. And like, Yeah, whatever. okay. Yeah, I used to be a, a, a very selfish dater, like, such what a selfish dater. Mean? Because I used to abuse the art of dating um, to just completely fulfill my own, um, when I wanted attention. When I, so basically so a dating I was like, selfie. I was like kind of like bored. addicted to, yes, if I was bored, exactly, yeah. I kind of fill time. And, it, and I actually would not, for, for years, would, I mean, unless they were, like, a serious, ish relationship where I actually like called them a boyfriend or something but I didn't from dates I didn't I never really ended it never really you know started a, in a relationship so you, you know what I mean there. I would just keep it very light and if I knew after just even a couple days that it really kind of wasn't going anywhere I'd still keep it like friendly but like I started to grow my little like little black book so to speak of, of guys that I could just call if I and not even anything sexual but it was just a like I'm bored. Yeah. I, I want to go see this movie, but I don't want to go alone. Like, oh, it would be fun to kind of get attention from so and so tonight, or like, you know, just to have somebody's yeah. like attention Girl, on totally. you. And you just, it, to me, I selfishly just soaked that up, and then I just let him go at the end of the night, and I just went on home, super happy, kind of like my love tank was full, and I was like, thank you, and that was it. But this poor guy had no idea that that's exactly what I was doing it for. Do you know what I mean? Right. And so I was dating so selfishly, but then keeping it very light. So I could keep all my options open, but still pull home homeboy back if I like need a last minute date. I compared to clutches, right? So like okay. purse clutches that are Got closet it. as women. So those were like my men for a very long time. You have your basic go-to clutch in your closet that mm -hmm. you know you can just literally grab and take anywhere and it goes with any outfit. It's kind of like seasonless, timeless, like everybody. It's, it's, not, it's not really like neither here nor there. People don't really make a comment about it, right. nor do they remember it. They're so just, it's vanilla. It's great. You know, yeah, <laughs> totally. But it goes with yep. everything. And then you have that like bedazzled, like really Your black unique, YSL like, clutch. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Your black YSL clutch, which is like super chic mm -hmm. so you want to just you know you want to take that to you know you're not going to bring that to like the bowling alley you know what I mean so no. yeah but then that, you have that your that's going on a date yeah, that's basically. going on yeah exactly to if you don't, like to tonight, a wedding yeah. exactly but then you also have your like like amazing like vintage like sequin sparkly clutch that you just like absolutely yeah. love and, yeah. and it goes with like very specific outfits totally. for very specific events yes, totally. so I had my men that went with very specific events you so paired it's just, like, your men Yes, yeah, like they wine. were like my clutches. And I'm not saying that this is right, but this, and, you know, and I'm still single, obviously, so I wouldn't suggest this line of thinking to anybody, but it was a very, it was, um, that's just, I just compartmentalized. And so I would not actually ever break, quote unquote, break up with anybody because I just kind of, when I did, when I was done kind of, quote unquote, to be honest, using them for that night, like just yeah. in this sense of getting attention, I'd put them back in the closet and just go to bed. And then depending on whatever schedule my week had, you know, coming up that I would just kind of look at my closet and see who I could kind of pull out, you know? And who matched with what yeah, you were doing exactly. or what mood you were in. Yeah, and I went through like a, uh, a like a darker phase a couple of years ago when I actually had to, uh, quote unquote, burn my black book. And I knew I could not contact those people ever again if I actually ever wanted to seriously move on and have a happy, That's healthy relationship. That's what I was going to say. That seems really healthy, yeah. though, to so like go that. that was selfless of you. It was so tough. So you, you realize guys. that the vibe that you were putting out in the world of this, like, I'm dating because I'm looking for a boyfriend, but I'm actually not really taking any of these things seriously is what yeah. the universe was giving yeah. back to you. So you totally. burned the little black book. And I'm not per dealing with anything personal. Yeah. Like, I, would, I, I had this whole mentality of, like, single lady, whatever. I work in fashion PR, 9 yes. to 5, my, my usual job. And so I'm very career oriented. I always have been. And I just, you know, I'm living in Los Angeles, doing my own thing, like whatever. Didn't think that I had like anything to kind of work out. But then all of a sudden when I found myself almost is like, you know, it's like a, like alcoholic almost when you start to kind of rely on it. You can't even be without it almost, yeah. you know? So any open evening would just make me feel lonely so I would just right. pick up the phone or, or you know text somebody you know because we yeah. don't call anyone anymore so it's like yeah so it's just <laughs> so like sad. yeah so Wait, you send that witty text I have a new fear by the way what of voices 
Because you text. There was like, what is that? Voiceophobia yes. or something? Yeah. Yes. Well, so, okay, it used to be like a height thing, but now some dating apps include their height, and now it's a voice thing because they text yeah. first. So I'm like, oh God, like, what does this person's voice sound like? I yeah. actually asked my friends who set me up with the recent one, and I was like, what is it? Is his voice okay? They're like, that's a weird question. He's it's normal. not though, but if you're going to be living with that for the rest of your life, you I want, mean, you yeah. know. Well, I was also like, I don't want any surprises. Like, we've been texting the whole time. Yeah. I have no idea what this human All of this a could sudden, be. Yeah. Like, Daffy Duck or like yeah. somebody with a giant <laughs> lisp or like the highest pitch voice ever. Or like maybe they're a smoker and they have like one of those holes in their neck. I don't know. Yeah. I well, don't know. Oh, Jen. You but don't know. I know. But the like, the point is, you don't know. No, I get it. But yes, there are so many variables. Right. And so it's the one yes. thing where you like might just be thinking, like, what is that you know that could be a turn on for somebody like a deep sexy voice yeah, or like whatever. mine well but also like when you don't hear their voice or they're not on the spot because actually when you're texting you do have right. that time to curate yeah. whatever text message you want to send back True. so it's like how witty is this person i've totally dated people like via text that were so witty and so cool and like calm and collected or whatever and I, you meet them in person and it's like hello crickets yeah, yeah because I'm, like, I'm sorry do you do, do you want to do you want some time to curate your answer back like yeah do you want to like you know like yeah or like they're like getting rock friends. sand where they're like all of i have a girlfriend a circle of girlfriends and one of our girlfriends is married and has kids and it's very funny and the other one was dating and she would text this girlfriend uh, what do I say? I just got this text sent to me. What do I say back? And oh my then God, yes. my friend would craft the text, and then the other friend would take it, hit copy and paste, and then all of a sudden we realized, well, well, this person is now dating the other person, and it was yes. like Roxanne, the movie I, with Steve Martin. I have literally dated some of my girlfriends boyfriends oh, back yeah. in the day because I just <laughs> literally was that person where they would yeah. send the screenshots but then it actually all went wrong it we totally went Ooh. rogue when I back sent sending the screenshot she actually like, <gasps> sent it to him whole that thing could happen. that could happen that could happen but then we we got her out of it good in a very How? unique way oh it was like I never thought that's when I knew I kind of had a dating problem because I was actually You're like I fixed this problem <laughs> holy shit I was like wait I need I need to take a step back yeah. because that was that's, that's when I, you that's bizarre. Bizarre. that was when the night you can, yeah. when you can fix something yeah. like that oh, that's yeah. weird when you can think yeah. that quick on yes. your feet when you're dating but um anyways yeah so I have literally met some of my girlfriends boyfriends that they've dated being just like hi and you're hi. like you meet them for the first time no, no, no. And like, like, i know nothing about yeah, you everything about i know you. everything and you everything. Actually, you actually know my personality not hers yeah. okay so <laughs> before we get to play our fun little game with you really quick what are in the book we know sort of obviously what the general idea is what are some like quick important tips that you can give to somebody who wants to start the path to be a little less selfless maybe more specific selfless. or more selfless maybe specifically in dating or yeah. just in i guess generally yeah. if you're living that way then it affects everything I mean, you right do. yeah you be somebody other people want to date if you're selfless yeah. but i think that being selfless self selfish or selfless in dating is so crucial and i know that so many times people don't actually t like say that it their behavior is selfish, but it actually is. So yeah. I think that having that awareness is so key. And, you know, it's not, um, I think, again, coming from a very selfish dater, um, I can identify other selfish daters because True. It's, you could, you're very familiar with the patterns yep. or the thing, you know, the lack of commitment or whatever. But um, it is just, a, a, um, our divorce rate is not <sighs> getting any better. Yeah. No. So it's kind of like, all right, what has to change here? You know, what, like, what is happening in our world and you know th there's always certain circumstances i'm not saying that that all every divorce is awful but i do think that people because of social media they the comparison game is strong yep. which doesn't help anybody nope. um and i think that we're just one swipe away from meeting somebody else that Grass will is always unquote, greener agree, always. agree with us yep. exactly and maybe yeah. people should stop using filters because just be who you are and you can oh, tell yeah. we can totally tell. we can tell, we can tell. yeah yeah oh. i yeah it's tough and i mean so, we all use them but sometimes they're no. aggressive One oh my gosh so aggressive. You really like, like a blue sky another thing is if you've made your face like 10 years younger yeah and you plump up your lips and you're saying That's, i didn't yeah. put on makeup today this is me naturally no. oh yeah yeah me naturally with yeah. all the fillers and eight nose jobs i've had or oh right. absolutely and yeah, everybody buys so eyelashes stop pretend that's the thing i was gonna say yes if people are okay if somebody's in a relationship and their significant other is posting these selfies and like let's just say fine you have to do because of your personality or whatever it is or you just really need attention that day like how is that person dating them and not judging them like oh yeah what first yeah. of all you don't look like that yeah ever. oh yeah i oh, totally real my, you yeah my brother said one time that when he had a um like he was seriously dating this girl and um 
but then he didn't realize what she looked like without makeup and literally makeup on the pillow like <gasps> sleeping over and then she'd take off her makeup at night he didn't recognize her like this whole thing yeah it was just not good. or like she like... gave him a hug and it, her makeup went on his shirt you know what I mean type of thing yeah it was Tragic. it Thanks, was Jeff. like a filter in person in person yeah. but also and guys are like a little less privy to these things because we as girls know the process like you said you oh, you're yeah. a selfish shader I can <sighs> identify one we can identify yeah. when someone has like a ton of makeup and they or even just fill, fillers and shit which all of yeah. it's fine it's just saying don't say that it's not right like if I'm yeah. gonna take a selfie I'm gonna be like my lashes are on fleek because yes. I just bought them totally call yes. yourself out and well that's the whole thing too with this book is I don't want anybody to think that I am against selfies. I love a good selfie. Honestly, if I have a good hair day, like that needs to be yeah. like photographed so I can so I Document. know I'm so capable. Yes, exactly. <laughs> or even my like niece and nephew, those are some of my favorite selfies with them, you know, and filters yeah. are so much fun, especially with kids. But it's like the way that we've just become so absorbed in it and so sincerely just utterly obsessed with ourselves yeah and also and, you have to live up to it if you keep looking yeah. like that then you have to like continue that pattern totally yeah, yeah absolutely which so just then how exhausting. do you like still do those things and stay away and get away from that you just do it in like a more authentic way yeah more authentic way and i think that it's also um i like to think of it as like if instagram was like deleted tomorrow and if you know we didn't like have a fun, like what kind of person would i be you know and what kind of life would i be living a more that present way one. all the time and yeah probably yeah. a more present one yeah and it does it does completely flood into dating and relationships because if you're not even confident in the person that you are in just your day to day if you rely on social media dating brings out the worst insecurities in people because oh, yeah. it, you're 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 so it's vulnerable meeting, it's so vulnerable you're meeting these strangers you're kind of trying to prove yourself or like show in a quick snapshot like how great you are or yeah. how cool you are whatever or what what the life you've lived you know at 30 years old now when i meet somebody i'm like i basically have to account for the last 30 years and share with them in in some cool witty fun way of like, like a this journey of that life. i've had this you know thus far yeah, yeah exactly so it, like the pressure's on so there's nothing it's an dating is just full of insecurities anyway so if, but if you are already insecure like just due to social media and you let that infiltrate your life it's kind of like what are we filling up on and it's kind of that that water pitcher analogy of um you know us as humans are we are water pitchers right so you need to fill those up in order to pour back out and so if we are filling ourselves with to be honest just utter crap we're going to be pouring it pouring back that out. back out and totally then we and then we're confused why our life is such a mess because you're and putting it out there exactly because that's all we're putting in ourselves so it's like it's people like all put this stuff in themselves air. and expect yeah they totally. have the, the, uh, very like you, unrealistic expectations you go do a thing so you can take a photo of it to say you did the thing but you were busy taking pictures of that's the what i'm saying time. Exactly. i think so, why people go to music right. festivals totally. just well, to take a picture this is why yeah. we're going to play yeah. our game yes. really quickly and we know that obviously social media is part of everybody's life as we've talked about it and those that aren't it's kind of scary because why are you not on social media yeah no extremes yeah no yeah. Be on it, but don't be into it. Like, How what about are you that? hiding? Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> totally. So, be on it, but not into it. So there yeah. we go. Um, so we we know there's a time and place for everything and we're going to list some places and events and we're going to have you tell us whether it's okay to be on your phone by saying selfie or if it's not okay to have your phone in hand mm. and you're going to say, put that phone on the shelfie. <laughs> you can just game. say shelfie too. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Or okay. you can have like all the sass, but we've got no time. So you got to say it quickly. Okay. Um, so this is our game called selfie or shelfie. Okay. Lauren. So okay. in the delivery room. Oh, shelfie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, how about on a first date? A shelfie. Because that's <gasps> yeah. fucking weird. Yeah. That is weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like who are you texting? How about before or after surgery? Depend. Well, sell, you should not be selfing. But if you just have your phone in general yeah. to let alert people and let sure. them know that you're okay, I could see that because my mom would freak out if yeah. I was in True. surgery or something, True. and I didn't let her know. But it, that's a very rare case. Yeah, I will say this: I had to have like a cyst removed from my ovaries. It's very common among women. Everyone be fine. Yeah. Um, it's fine. <laughs> so I took a picture of myself in my like hospital gown because I thought it was hysterical, yeah. and I was like, outfit of the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like totally. when you're poking fun at it, but yeah, right. yes. that's totally. what I mean. It's funny if you. Yeah. Make fun yeah. of it, but, it's, but that's if you're like super that's like ten percent. It totally totally right. should be shelved. Yeah. Right, sure. exactly. Yes. Yeah. Unless you're gonna make a joke because you want to lighten the fucking mood. Yeah. Um, how about uh, dur during or after sex? <gasps> oh, shelfy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. Okay. That's you know how people weird. used to roll over and smoke a cigarette? People now roll over and, and pick up their phone. It, yeah. It's like, can you not have Which a moment? Not no. right. Yeah. No. <laughs> totally. Um, what about in church? 
Uh, you should not be sh- uh, selfing in church. Yeah. I don't think so. No. I what mean, if you're taking notes on your notepad because that's your new thing that you take notes on? You know what? On. And actually, there is the Bible app on your phone. So actually, even pastors now, it's very common. If well, you go to church, they'll say, your... get out your Bibles or get out your phones. Uh-uh. If you're uh-uh. on your phone. look up what there's something totally. talking about. Totally. Yeah, and okay. that's like, you know. But to me, I just can't do that because I get so distracted. Yeah. I just, I'm old Yeah, then you like leave like, that app and go straight to like oh, your to- dating yeah. app. Who's in this exactly. room that's single? Yeah, let's Call start me. like swiping left. Yeah, proximity. We go to the same church. Grinder. <laughs> okay, or that. Um, which they now tell people they need to get HIV tested. They, like, send reminders and things. You know what? Hey, That's whatever. nice of them. Oh. Yeah. How about at the vet when your animal's getting checked up? Are you taking with, uh, of yourself, though, as a selfie? A selfie, like the, maybe with your animal or the doctors in the uh, Who knows? You're just I like, don't know. I would just say selfie. Yeah. I just think that's odd, an odd time. Um, it's really odd. Yeah. What about, okay, well, well, I'll do one more. Um, like, at a restaurant. With the, you know how people stand on their chairs and they're doing that or just whatever with the food? Taking, yeah, food photos. I think that it's, A, depends if it's your job or not, if you're whatever, if that's like your Instagram. But I think just enjoy your meal. I mean, if it's super cool, I have had some really cool totally like, yeah. especially in Los Angeles a big yeah. city any big city you're like oh my this is awesome yeah. but for the most part it's just enjoy your freaking food right yeah, you know totally. like just like eat we've it. all seen a steak yeah. yeah yeah exactly and we know how great your life is and that you're at this really fancy restaurant and like that's half of it too people are just almost want to flaunt their money in like totally. a weird way like oh we're back like at we're this at, steak restaurant we're at Catch yeah. in LA hit me to this dessert that you break the ball open and the stuff oozes like, out we've oh all my seen god that. There's like one you're more not the first person catch. to post that thing totally my least favorite thing though is when I know a girlfriend is going on a first date with somebody and then I see them post a photo from their date not of the person but of whatever's going on there I'm like ha- yeah. you had the nerve to bring your phone out and take a- you said yeah. hey new guy I'm gonna take a social totally. media photo right now yes. how did you reveal that about yourself you have some balls yep you yes. totally do totally no. do no 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 yeah, don't do any to of go that. back to cotillion immediately yes I social media cotillion totally did cotillion maybe. do they still do cotillion I don't know I went also I went, it's yeah, not really a Jewish thing but I went so. yes and also maybe inject some social Social media awareness into your cotillion and remember to be authentic yes yes and to think about in the moment how you can be a little less selfish yes yeah like maybe offer to take a photo of the other person and where yes, yes. and if yes. you need <laughs> tips and tricks because you're forgetting everything that we just talked about so graciously for you Kristen, remind everyone where they can find your book. And they can you. get it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or visit my website, selfie2selfless.com. And uh, what about you? Where can they find you? They can find me on Instagram at, at selfie to selfless, all one word. And um, follow me on there, and you'll find all my information. Send me an email. would love to keep in touch. All right, great. And awesome. where can everyone find you? Everyone can find me at Jennifer Golden on all the social meds. And what about you? And everyone can find me at Lauren Leonelli on all the social meds. That's so nice. And guys, don't forget to tune in next week for our guests, Lauren Mayhew and Matt Ritter. Yes. It's going to be a great show. Yes, you guys. And uh, follow us on all the social meds, but not too much. Make sure you're, like, in your own yeah, moment Make sure you yeah, put your well. phone down, too. Right. Yeah. Yes. All right. We will see you guys next week. Thanks again. Thank you. Love Bye. you a long time. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV.